All right, so this one kicks off. We're right in the thick of things. We've got security guard, unnamed security guard, number 37. He's really trying to get into this vent. Why? Well, he's playing hide and seek with something. We don't know quite what it is yet, but we do catch a glimpse of it in the shadow. It's looking rather spooky. We teleport into the POV of whatever this monster is, chasing after the guy, and then bam, we cut to the man strapped into a chair. It's looking like a scene straight out of Saw. We've got this mask with contraptions, and it's going to go into his face and mess his face up, and it's going to hurt really bad. Sadly, everybody's favorite little puppet, Jigsaw, is not here. Now, we cut to Joss Hutcherson. He lives with his little kid sister, Abigail, who he affectionately calls Abs. When I have a son, I'm going to call him Pex. Anyway, now we cut to the mall, which is where Josh works. He's here talking to his colleague friend about dreams. Bro is really into dreaming. Me too. I do it every single night. Then we see Josh getting some food when, bam, we see this child and then a man grabs him. This is looking very suspicious. Josh immediately abandons his food order and chases the man down, jumping him, clapping him in the face, and then he, ki he kills him. The man drowns in the water. The man survives, uh, but Josh is seriously reprimanded. In fact, he's fired. Because turns out, that was the kid's dad. That kid will never be able to tell other kids, my dad will beat up your dad, because he, he saw his dad get his shit rocked. So here he is now talking to Steve, who's a man that may help him find a new job. Steve looks over Josh's resume and sees, wow, you've been fired from this job and that job. What's your deal, man? Then Steve takes a closer look at Josh's last name. He suddenly pauses and then takes a very close look at Josh's face. It's a very peculiar moment. In the movie business, we call this foreshadowing. Also, Steve is Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. As things are looking very bleak, Steve says, actually, I have one job for you. You see, it's a security job, it doesn't pay well, and you gotta work nights. Uh-oh, Josh says, no nights, no can do. Because in fact, Josh likes to dream at night. In fact, he likes to dream of Nebraska. Jobless and with no bitch, Josh heads home to see Abby's babysitter, who instead of babysitting is looking at commercials of women getting married. Sorry, honey, you're ugly. It's not, it's not in the cards for you. Josh chats with Abby, who's an avid crayon painter, and she's been misbehaved tonight. She hasn't had any food, and Josh says, hey, you need to eat or else you're not going to grow to be full-sized, and bro is speaking from experience on this one. That night, it's the usual routine for Josh. He pops some pills, gets some music playing, stares at Nebraska, and bam, he's, th he's there living out these, this awesome dream where he's with his, his family, everything's looking good, bam, his baby brother gets kidnapped and is gone forever. He awakens and we cut to a teacher-parent conference situation where Josh is with his aunt. Now his aunt is arguing that she deserves to have custody of Abby because Josh is unfit. Personally, with the, 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 the sheer speed and running form he displayed earlier, I'd say he's quite in good fitness. However, he is unemployed, so I do see where she's coming from. The aunt starts crying and making a fuss, and then we get our first look at this character, Doug. He's dug and out. He's, he's really, he's, he's solid here as Doug. In the following scene, Josh is seen talking to this lady about how his aunt really doesn't love Abby and just wants her to be able to get the checks, you know, government assistance. But all that being said, Josh sees the reality of the situation. There's no way a judge is going to side with him. And the lady says, well, how's that job situation looking like? And Josh realizes what he must do. He calls Steve and says, give me the job. And just like that, he gets the job. We cut to the place while Steve on the phone explains his backstory for us. It's a pizzeria from the 80s with creepy, animatronic, human-sized terminators, but they're cute. But, you know, the place got shut down because there was a string of murders, very suspicious scenario, but the owner just loves it. He's got a sentimental feel for it, so it's still here and still needs protecting. The security system's outdated, but it still works. If anything goes wrong, you can always just trip the breaker. Unfortunately, the electricity is a little bit iffy. But all that being said, Josh sits down, and this is a very familiar scene if you've ever played the video games. Um, I haven't, but I, I think Markiplier shows up at one point and starts asking for milk. Upon sitting down, Josh realizes there's a little videotape with his name on it. Yes, I have been lying to you the whole time. The character's name is Mike, but we will continue with Josh. Here we learn a little bit more about things. We see that the creator of the place married his two biggest loves in the world, technology and little kids. Pause. As that video concludes, Josh gets up and we get our first look at the animatronics. Upon merely looking at them, Josh is immediately drowsy. He's tired. He goes to take a nap. Bam, we're back in Nebraska. The same exact scenario as last time plays out with his brother getting kidnapped. But then there's something new. There's more children here. Josh is like, what is this? Did you see where my brother went? The kids mistakenly think he wants to play tag, so they run away. Josh makes chase, but then trips, being rudely awakened back into reality. Next up, we catch up with Josh's aunt. And who's that? Josh's babysitter. Uh-oh. Looks like they're all in cahoots together to frame Josh because the aunt wants to get Abby all for herself. 
So she's paying the babysitter to try to find dirt on Josh. But the babysitter's like, actually, he's a really upstanding individual, to which the babysitter's brother says, plan B, why don't we kill him? Whoa, Doug does not like this idea. Oh, also, Matt Pat uh, is here, and, and he, does, he does the thing. It's just a theory. You- anyway, they all agree on a plan C. The babysitter notes that Josh got a new job, and the brother's like, oh, great, so let's just, you know, trash the place, get him fired. Fast forward to Josh sleeping on the job. He's back in Nebraska, the land of missing children. This time he questions the kids again, and they run again, and he chases, but this time he catches one. But it's not without consequences he gets slashed in the arm. He wakes up and sees that the slash is real. Then on the security cameras, he sees a cop car. He goes to greet the cop and sees that it's a beautiful lady, Wood Collab. Her name's Vanessa, and she's right off the bat really friendly. First things first, she dresses Josh's wound. Apparently, she used to be an EMT. She says if his heart ever stops, she can start it back up again. As for me, mine's thumping. In fact, my blood flow is traveling downwards as we speak. Then Vanessa asks, have you met them yet? To which Josh is rather confused. By them, she's of course referring to the animatronic Terminators. She turns on all the lights and gets them dancing. And Josh is in shock. He can't believe they're throwing it back like that. I think he's more creeped out than excited, but Vanessa is loving it. Then she casually mentions that, you know, several kids went missing here. To which Josh is like, wait, wait a second. You gotta tell me more about that. She elaborates further, and this really strikes a chord with Josh. Because, of course, his brother was kidnapped. Fast forward a bit, and it looks like she spent the night doing God knows what. Because it's already the morning. And as Josh leaves, the goons get ready to make their move. We got the babysitter on lookout duty, her brother, and his two buddies. They go in and immediately start trashing the place. But it's not long before the animatronic residents of the pizzeria come to life. First, this guy hears noises in this fridge. He opens it to find a little cupcake. Its eyes open wide and stare at him. Then, a sound from behind jerks his attention. It's Chica. And wait, how did the how did the, the cupcake get over there? Whatever, the, the, the cupcake teleported, and then it just jumps at him. Bam, he's, he's dead. Then, the fat one sees the aftermath, and Chica looks at him with eyes that say, Oh, you next. Oh, I'm coming for you. The fat man starts running away as fast as he can, which is not very fast. All the meanwhile, this guy's watching the security cam. He's like, what are you doing, bro? What's, I mean, what's going on here? So he follows suit to try to get to the bottom of things. Meanwhile, Fatboy gets trapped in a closet with Bonnie, where he gets deleted. Bonnie steps out looking big and huge and blue and scares the guy. Eventually, he's tracked down by Foxy and dies. Last but not least, we have the babysitter, which... I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, I don't think she deserves to die. She seems like a generally okay person that got reeled into this situation. But anyway, she goes into the establishment, sees a little ghost boy, tracks him down and sees the Freddy animatronic and a voice from within saying warmer and warmer. And she's like, oh, oh, I I like the sound of that. I'm going to stick my head right up in there. And then the ghost boy arm grabs her and she is literally eaten in half. Bone apple teat. The next day, Josh is talking to Abs, and he's like, look at this cool sheriff badge I got. And she's like, I don't give a shit about your stupid fucking sheriff badge, Josh. Then she runs off and randomly gets the urge to open this drawer. Somehow she falls in the process and finds these papers, which are related to her being given up to Josh's aunt. Abby says, I don't want to go with her. She smells bad. Josh says, look, I agree. She do be stankin'. Before the intellectually stimulating conversation can continue, there's a knock at the door. It's Vanessa. She's like, oh, Josh, I didn't know you were a daddy for real. And he's like, no, no, this is just my sister. Then he tells Abby to bug off. The adults are talking. Fortunately, Vanessa has some bad news. She reveals that someone broke into the pizzeria, and she knows it was Josh's fault. He left the door unlocked, and she knows he's addicted to popping pills, which he says are just for sleeping. Things are looking grim for Josh. Vanessa says, once I follow this report, it's out of my hands. You just don't understand, Josh says. Help me then, says Vanessa. So they go off for a little walk, and Josh starts spilling his guts. He reveals the whole story about how when he was 12, his little brother got kidnapped, and he's been really upset about it ever since. And by using sleeping pills and dreaming, he's trying to relive the moment to uncover the details of who took his brother. He believes it's buried somewhere in his subconscious. Josh says, this is probably the part where you think I'm crazy. Vanessa says, no, I know what crazy really looks like. Foreshadowing moment. After that, Vanessa's like, okay, I'll let you get away with criminal negligence just this once. Fast forward a bit, it's nighttime, which means it's time to work. Josh calls up the babysitter, but she's dead. Which means, you guessed it, Abby's coming to work. Inside, he makes her a little fort to sleep in while he goes on a little cleaning montage. These jerks left such a mess. After cleaning up, he goes back to napping, where he confronts the ghost children once more. Once again, he pleads with them, please tell me who took my brother. And this one says, okay, we'll tell you, but what are you going to give us in return? Uh, have you, have you heard of Roblox? 
Did you die before that came out? Suddenly, Josh is awoken by Abby's screams. He rushes over and finds her surrounded by all the animatronics. Freddy gets up and marches towards Josh, but then it looks like Abby's fine. She says they were just tickling her to death. Freddy calms down and Josh meets all the others. We got Foxy, Bonnie, and Chica. Josh is absolutely shook. At first, he thinks he's being pranked. I mean, someone must be controlling these things, right? Don't worry, bud. You'll find out later. The two head home, and while Abby goes to sleep, Josh looks over her drawings. And then it all hits him all at once. It's them. The kids in his dreams, and also the kids that went missing. They are the robots. Next morning, Josh confronts Abby. Josh is like, so these are ghosts, right? Like ghost kids controlling the animatronics? And Abby's like, uh, duh, you f idiot. That's ghosts 101. They be doing creepy shit. Then Josh walks away and asks her if she knows about Garrett, their long lost brother. Abby doesn't know much about him, which makes what happens next all the more peculiar. Abby drew a picture of Garrett getting taken away, looking straight out of a scene from Josh's dreams. Josh is like, but, but how could you know this? It turns out the ghost children told her. But unfortunately, they didn't reveal who took Garrett. In fact, all they seem to talk about is a yellow rabbit. We cut to the next night where Vanessa's ready at Freddy's. She's staring at the drawing of the yellow rabbit, with a Vietnam flashback-like stare. I think she knows more than she's letting on. Then Abby and Josh walk in. Abby goes straight for the animatronics and they come to life. And Vanessa doesn't look surprised at all. Josh is surprisingly chill about this. He's just like, oh, I guess you knew about this all along, huh? Josh is trying to get serious, but Vanessa is all laughs and giggles. In fact, they all start building a fort together, with the animatronics doing all the heavy lifting. I think this is child labor. I mean, Bonnie even passes out from exhaustion. With the fort nearing completion, Vanessa goes off to get some tablecloths. Josh follows, but is surprised how well she knows her way around the place. He's starting to get suspicious. He's pretty sure this bitch knows something. But she plays it cool, and Josh keeps talking about how he wants to uncover the mystery of his brother, yada yada yada. Back to Abby, she's having the time of her life with the dead kids. When, oh no! She touches the electric guitar and gets zapped. Uh, you idiot. That's why they're called electric guitars. Wait, did they actually... They, they don't work like that. They don't. Fortunately, Abby is okay, and then we cut to outside. Josh and Vanessa continue their convo, and Vanessa's like, Listen, you bring Abby back here again, and I'll fuck shoot you. And that just came out of nowhere, first of all. Just a complete, out-of-character, 180-degree turn for Vanessa. And I don't know if my feelings for her can survive this. And it really makes no sense, because earlier, Josh was trying to be really cautious, and Vanessa's like, No, everything's fine. Just go, you know, let's build a fort together. Anyway, back at home, Josh knows what he needs to do. He needs to call in backup. Unfortunately, that means bringing in the stinky aunt. Abby's immediately pissed off about this. She's like, I hate you, Josh Hotsurchin, I hate you, and runs away. But really, Josh needs just needs her to look over Abby for a little bit. It's time to crack this mystery once and for all. But first, more pills. Give me that shit. What an asshole. Josh is now back in Nebraska, but things are different. Garrett's safe, and his parents are there talking to him. Then from behind, we see the ghost children. They've altered Josh's dreams to give him exactly what he wants, and he can continue to live in this reality. But the kids just want one thing, Abby. Then Josh's whole dream family starts gaslighting the shit out of him. They're like, y you suck, you're bad, you're not good for Abby. Even the little bro is getting in on the action. With all this peer pressure, Josh cracks. He agrees, you can have Abby, but then instantly regrets it. Darman type shit. But it's too late. His family and Garrett disappear, and now the ghost children are circling around him, slashing him before he can even react. He wakes up to find himself in the saw-like contraption. But fortunately, the thing hasn't been maintained in like 20 years, so he gets out. And then, oh no, the babysitter and her douchebag brother. How sad. Josh starts to run away, but Foxy's after him. Oh my god, it's closing in. Just as Josh opens the door, we cut back to Abby. After her aunt gets her ready for bed, we see there's an unwelcome visitor in the household. I mean, how the hell did this giant-ass thing get in here so quietly? Come on. With the aunt now subdued, Abby is taken along for an adventure. But how are we going to get to Freddy's? Oh, another YouTuber cameo. That's Corey X. Kenshin. And he doesn't find this weird at all. We cut back to Josh, who's been saved by Vanessa. She's dressing his wounds while coming clean with the truth. She knows who's behind all this. A man named William Afton. Her father. And oh my god, that's Garrett's toy. Josh can't believe she hid this from him, but she swears she didn't know about Garrett. Not at first, at least. Josh reveals that he gave up Abby, and we learn that the ghost children want to make her like them. Vanessa explains that the kids themselves aren't evil. They're being influenced by William Afton, who is the re actual evil guy. Fortunately, Vanessa brought some weapons that are very effective against the animatronics. Tasers and more tasers. But Vanessa doesn't want to join the battle. She knows that William is coming, and she can't face him. Meanwhile, Abby arrives at Freddy's and slowly makes her way towards all the animatronics. Back to Josh, he's speeding over. He gets to Freddy's and starts crawling through a vent, but it's just a few seconds too late because Abby's heading off with Chica. Oh gosh, Josh almost gets spotted, but fortunately he's chilling. Then he uses his 200 IQ big brain to spill some water and taser the water, which takes Bonnie and Freddy out of the equation. At the same time, 
Chica's leading Abby over to her new home. The inside of this thing. Suddenly, she grabs Abby and starts trying to force her in. But Josh comes in right in the nick of time and tasers Chica in the eyeball. Josh and Abby run away, but there's someone they forgot. Cupcake. Unfortunately, it grabs a hold of Josh's leg. Abby continues to run away, but grabs the attention of Foxy. He follows her around, but Abby hides in this ball pit. Oh no, he's closing in. But thank God. Guess who decided to be a hero? Vanessa. Cutting back to Josh, he gets rid of Cupcake. But now, that's the least of his worries. The big bad is here. The big, giant, piss-yellow rabbit. Josh immediately tases him, but it has no effect. This one is built different. He starts beating up Josh and taunting him about his little brother. As Josh is knocked out and about to be put out for good, Vanessa comes through with Abby. Vanessa finally works up the courage to shoot her dad, but then just stops. I mean, please, keep shooting. He's not, he's, this is clearly like an armor. You need to keep going. Instead, she allows her father to close in. You had one job, Vanessa. Keep him in the dark and kill him if he got too close. That's two jobs. Vanessa, be serious. What is this? This is not the time for this. As a result of this unserious behavior, her father penetrates her, rearranging her organs in the process. She collapses. It looks like all hope is lost. But then Josh suddenly obtains plot armor powers. He magically knows the perfect solution to this problem. He tells Abby that to make the kids good again, she has to show them who William actually is by using the drawings. So Abby runs off, snags the drawing, makes some minor adjustments, a few revisions, if you would, and pins them back on the board. And then, oh my god, it's a drawing of William killing all the kids. Now the kids suddenly understand that he's evil. Ah. So they turn on him, and the cupcake bites his, his stomach, and then the, the armor starts closing in on his body. I would gotta say, this is, this is bad engineering. That's just me. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, it's the guy. The guy from before. Remember he was being suspicious about Josh's last name? Now we know why. Anyway, he dies, supposedly. I mean, he does say, I'll be back. Bro is a Terminator for real. But anyway, in the aftermath, we see that Abby is much more well-behaved these days. And Vanessa is in a coma. She's, she's not, yeah, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. And then we conclude with William Afton suffering while this blonde little boy closes the door on him. And that's a wrap. Hey, man. How you, how you doing, man? What's going on with you? Why are you telling me you, I fell off in the comments every time I post a new video? Come on, man. This is a hard time for me. I'm really trying to come back with the channel, and it's, um, I hope you guys are enjoying the videos.